Okay, so uh, case two here. This is a shoulder papule in a 30-year-old female, and this was a shave biopsy. And you can see it's a dome-shaped papule. It is uh, filling the superficial dermis and pressed directly against the epidermis overlying it. At the periphery, we can see there's an uh, epithelial collarette uh, around the lesion. Uh, the, the cells form a diffuse sheet, and there are dilated, almost staghorn uh, hemangiopericytic pattern, if you like, uh, kind of vessels, like the, the pattern that we see in solitary fibrous tumor. And this is just a reminder, this case and the last case, a reminder that you can see staghorn vessels in all sorts of different tumors, not just solitary fibrous tumor, okay? So just remember, it's a useful pattern, but it's seen in a wide range of different entities. So the cells here are kind of interesting. Many of them have this cytoplasmic clear vacuolation uh, with peripheral nuclei that give them a signet ring appearance. And then if you look closer, some also have kind of a vaguely foamy or maybe even a granular almost cytoplasm. I, I think it's more foamy or xanthomatous in this case personally. Uh, occasionally you can see some little, uh, little pink uh, globules here. I think they are actually red cells, most of them in vascular spaces. But in some areas you could wonder, you know, is this a blister cell like you'd see in an epithelial and hemangioendothelioma? I mean, that could cross your mind potentially. Um, so those are all things that, you know, you could maybe wonder about. The cells are quite bland. I mean, here they really look like a xanthoma, but the, the uh, distribution of them would be a, a bit unusual for a xanthoma or xanthelasma. Well, I tell you, when I see, uh, anytime I see a lesion, whether it's epithelioid, spindled, foamy, granular, xanthomatous, if I see a sheet-like nodular proliferation of cells filling the superficial dermis, making a dome-shaped papule with a collarette around it, the first thing I think of is epithelioid fibrous histiocytoma, or uh, an alternative name that had been proposed in the past was epithelioid cell histiocytoma. <clears throat> and these classically are, are made of epithelioid uh, histiocytes or histiocytoid cells with a, a collagenous background and this uh, dome-shaped papule, usually with a collarette around it and with dilated vessels. Okay, so when I was in fellowship, these were at the time thought to be a variant of dermatofibroma. And that never sat terribly well with me because for one thing, they don't really look like a dermatofibroma. They're pushed right against the surface. They have a collarette. They don't have collagen trapping usually. They don't really have any of the features that we typically see in conventional fibrous histiocytoma slash dermatofibroma. Also about half the time they can express EMA, which is something you don't see in traditional conventional dermatofibroma. So I never really liked that explanation. And it turns out a few years uh, later after I was in practice, um, uh, there was a paper published that found that a majority of these tumors actually have a uh, an ALK gene fusion and ALK expression by immunohistochemistry. So ALK1 is positive in the majority, about 90% almost, of cases of this entity. And here, we did ALK, and ALK is positive. Now, it's not a terribly satisfying positivity. It's kind of weak and focal, but really crisp otherwise. It really is a, a stain that, in my experience, ALK1 usually has very low background staining. So when I see even focal positivity, I would say, well, that's probably real. And in this case, also, the other main thing I might think of in a case like this would be, could it be a melanocytic process, or could it be a xanthoma, or a juvenile xanthogranuloma, or some other histiocytic process? So that's the kind of differential I often encounter when I am thinking of epithelioid fibrous histiocytoma. And, and one or two other things which we'll talk about later, I don't want to give away uh, future diagnoses. So um, in the past, I tolerated this weak, kind of uh, pouchy, um, unsatisfying ALK1. And then what I discovered a couple years ago is the problem here is the clone. For epithelioid fibrous histiocytoma, and also, in my experience, for ALK-positive melanocytic lesions like ALK-fused uh, spitz, uh, spitz nevus and spitzoid neoplasms, there is a particular clone that I really like, and it's D5F3. 
Alk1 D5F3 clone will have usually a much stronger and more robust staining in spitzoid lesions and in epithelioid fibrous histiocytoma. So I know my hemepath colleagues um, that have tried using it feel it's too strong and they're not big fans. Um, so I, I don't know, I'm not a hematopathologist, but I will tell you that for um, uh, mesenchymal lesions that have ALK and for melanocytic lesions, I love the D5F3 clone. So if you don't have that in your lab, try to get it and compare it to your old ALK clone and see which one you like better. Um, I, I have no conflict of interest with the, the company that makes that clone. Um, in fact, I'm not even sure all, all the companies that do make it, if it's one or more. Uh, but in any case, um, I just really like the clone and it works well. So just a tip. Um, and then uh, that's, uh, to me, what I love about this is these, as far as we know, these are benign, benign, benign epithelioid fibrous histiocytoma. So I love it when you get a weird spindly or epithelioid or histiocytic looking lesion that's a papule in the superficial dermis with a collarette and you get ALK expression and SOX10 is negative, well, you're pretty much done. You're probably dealing with a variant of epithelioid FH. And the last thing I'll leave you with before moving on, I really love this entity because my concept of what these can look like has greatly expanded over time. I have seen this one, which is signet ring and kind of foamy cell change. I've seen a very granular um, uh, EFH that really looked almost like granular cell tumor cytologically. I've seen very spindled lesions. I've seen a spindled epithelioid fibrous histiocytoma that had spindled, whirling, swirling story form growth that remember, resembled DFSP, but was fish negative and was ALK positive. Um, I've seen a case that looked kind of like a Bednar tumor, which I've not reported yet, but uh, um, I think I'm going to wait for a little bit more follow-up uh, in that case. So hopefully no, none of you go out there and find another one of those and scoop me on it. But if you do, that's okay. I'll just publish the second reported example and it'll all be good. So in any case, um, I have seen ones that have bone formation, uh, chondroblastoma-like areas, which has been reported in the literature uh, in a small series. I've seen ones that are deeper nodules that don't have a collarette. I've seen ones I saw one in the pinky toe that went all the way down and was near the periosteum and it was ALK positive. So if you see a weird lesion in any of these things and you're not sure what to do with it, try an ALK and keep that in mind. There's only a handful of other uh, mesenchymal lesions that are ALK expressing, really a relatively small number, um, which we don't have time to go into here because I'm already uh, behind time as usual. But in any case, I really like these because they're kind of cool. They have a wide range of features and they also are benign. And so when you find this diagnosis, you can have a good answer that is, is solid and you can tell the treating physician these are benign probably don't need to do anything else. My personal view is you can watch and wait on these, you know, it's possible they may occasionally recur uh, in a non-destructive local recurrence manner, which, okay, if it does, then you can re-excise it then. So that's my personal, my personal take on these. All right, epithelioid fibrous histiocytoma, in this case, with a cool signet ring cell and xanthomatous change. I hope you liked that case, I really did.